Welcome back to my channel. My name is Matthew Vidum. I'm talking about the channel. I'm talking about tutorials today. In this video, I am talking about the Lumix FZ82 Super Zoom camera, which has an amazing 1200 millimeter lens. Oh my god, I'm so dizzy. All right, um, intro. First of all, welcome to my new office. It is incredibly bare for now because we only just moved in. I'm still in isolation, so I can't really go out to shops and buy things to decorate this with, but that will all come soon. Anyways, the point of this video is not my home office or a new pad. If you want to know more about that, you can uh, check out the members only moving vlog that I posted recently. Uh, this video is about the Lumix FZ82, which has a uh, 60x optical zoom lens with a 20 to 1200 millimeter equivalent. To give context, Currently, the longest lens, the longest lens I own is the Canon 7200 2.8 Mark II image stabilized with a OG Instagram sticker on it. This thing is 1200 millimeters long, despite it being in a smaller body, obviously. The reason I bought this camera is because I was stuck in isolation, or I'm still stuck in isolation. I get out on Monday because uh, I met up with a friend who had COVID and he was positive and I had to isolate. Anyways, I talked about that in the previous video. Um, but yeah, I moved to this new view and I was like, you know what? I don't have long lenses. Let me, let me find a camera that can shoot with a long lens, but I don't want to spend too much money. So I bought this second hand on mpb.com, which is like a um, second hand camera store, I guess. And boy, am I impressed. Firstly, before committing to buy it, I googled if it has time-lapse mode, and yes, indeed, it has a time-lapse mode. Not as advanced as the S-series, the Lumixes, but advanced enough to shoot some basic time-lapses, and even Holy Grail time-lapses, as we'll find out as well. I paid 170 pounds, new. I think on the Panasonic website, it's 299, but I've seen them listed for 250 as well. So, peanuts, really. And of course, the image quality isn't amazing. It's only like an 18 megapixel something sensor, and you know, high ISO isn't great uh, because the sensor is small. It is a bridge camera. A bridge camera is something between a DSLR where you can take the lens off and a compact camera, which doesn't have this big lens. So it's in between, it's a bridge camera, but uh, yeah, super, super impressed. So in this video, I'll go over, you know, some of the footage that I shot with, some tips, uh, show you some cool time lapses that I shot, things I like, things I would change. And yeah, look, it's a random gear video, but I hope you'll find it at least entertaining or a little bit insightful. Let's go. Let's have a look at the menu. I'll show you the uh, time-lapse mode that is built in, which is pretty, it's pretty straight forward, pretty straightforward. So, I mean, first of all, it's a touchscreen, which is lovely. Classic Panasonic menu here. And uh, what I recommend is, uh, yeah, standard photo style. It doesn't matter which photo style because you're shooting raw anyway. Full sensor usage, quality, raw, very good. Very much like that. And a fine or a standard JPEG, so let's just go with raw. It shoots up to one second uh, raw intervals, by the way, which is very good to know. No need for any of that. Uh, what we want here is time-lapse shot. And it also has stop motion animation, which is beautiful. Time-lapse shot. Uh, start time, you can set a start time. For example, if you're not home, you want to shoot sunrise or sunset. Very good. But yeah, we're just going to go with now. And then interval up to 99 minutes, which is great. And up to 9,999 images. So yeah, I mean, you can tell that this is the early version of what's built into the S1 that I'm filming on right now. What else would I do? Shutter type, go mechanical, um, ISO limit, I set that for my aperture priority test. High ISO, not great on this camera, obviously, it is a small sensor, and ISO increments, I change that to there as well. But yeah, that is, uh, that is pretty much it. There's some other stuff in here that might be useful. You can also render um, time lapses in camera. So you can go and select a sequence to then render that in your desired resolution and frame rate, just like we saw on the S1 and other cameras. Pretty dang good, if you ask me. Like, for a 170 pound camera, fantastic. Now, when you start shooting, the issue with a camera like this is obviously this long lens means the slightest wobble on your setup can be on the floor or a floorboard or your tripod or wind even can just hit it. This will shake it. Now, contrary to common sense, you turn off your stabilizer. Otherwise, your camera will keep looking for motion to try and stabilize and make more motion uh, pretty much. So that's not great, right? Now, I have used my heaviest tripod, which is a video tripod, 
successfully with no wobble, but then there's wind. And in that case, in this wind -y situation, I highly suggest using the mechanical shutter and not the electronic shutter. Electronic shutters can have this weird phenomenon where the image gets compressed. And I assume this has to do with how the sensor gets read out different from normal photos. It creates these really weird artifacts. Here's a shot from my 62, the worst I've ever seen. I can't really explain it. I want to make a separate video about it, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad. So mechanical shutter helps with that, or if you are shooting electronic shutter, longer shutter speeds help with that as well. Anywho, the first thing I shot when I got this camera was uh, one of the more famous buildings in Canary Wharf, which is One Canada Square. I checked Google Maps and it is exactly four kilometers away. So I pointed this camera all the way to the long end, 1200 mil, which will not be its sharpest, by the way. That's just the thing, a 20 to 1200 millimeter lens will not be extremely sharp at its extreme ends. It'll be somewhere in between those that it is at its optimal performance. But even then, you just can't make a great lens that has a focal length from 20 to 1200 millimeters. There's a reason that no professionals use lenses like that. They have 16 to 35, 35 or 24 to 70, and then 70 to 200, and then teleconverters to use on their pro cameras because they are simply just better image quality. Anyways, I make sure to disable stabilization, switch to manual mode, dial in the appropriate exposure settings, go to the time-lapse menu and hit start. I think I used a two second interval for about 200 shots, which I then repeated a bunch over with different shots. And this is what it looked like straight out of camera. Now keep in mind, they're raw files. So they're always gonna look a bit gray and flat. They need some contrast, some saturation, some sharpening and denoising. But we'll talk about post-producing these images later. But yeah, look, it's uh, it's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with how this looked like. And here's what it looked like when I fixed it in After Effects. So what I did there is added some color grading and stabilized it using the warp stabilizer set to no motion. You could do this manually, well, manually with the normal motion stabilizer, but just slapping the warp stabilizer on there is pretty easy. Now, I just repeated that. I shot a bunch more footage and here's what they look like. These are graded, but not stabilized. So less windy, more stable shots uh, look decent. They're still not perfect, but they are definitely good enough for a 170 pound camera that is just so much fun to play with. Also, this camera weighs nothing. It's like 600 grams or less, I think. It feels like a toy. I'm not used to this kind of camera. I'm used to a 1DX or an S1, you know, big, heavy, bulky cameras uh, that hurt your neck. Did I scratch that lens? Better not have. Nah, I didn't. That was just a bit of spit. <laughs> So one of the main concerns I had with this camera was its battery life. It is a tiny battery. And this is also, by the way, something I don't love to get the battery out. You got to take the tripod plate out and same goes for the SD card, which sits in here. But yeah, this battery is small. That is a tiny battery. It is a 895 milliamp hour battery. And I read online that these were rated for about 300 photos per charge. And I was like, oh, damn it. So I immediately bought a dummy battery that goes in here and then you open this little latch and then you can just charge it from a uh, battery or from the wall uh, socket. Now, I'm very happy to say that I shot 4,000 images on one and a half or a little bit more battery charges. I think the first battery wasn't fully charged and I shot easily over a thousand images. With a full battery, I think I shot about 2,000 or more images. Like it just kept going very, very pleasantly surprised by the battery life in this thing. You can charge it over USB here on the side. It's got a mini or a micro HDMI port and a micro USB port. However, when you plug it in, the camera stops working. So you can't shoot it while it's charging through the USB, which is pretty annoying. Charging time was pretty, pretty average, pretty standard. It's a small, small battery, so it can't really you know, take a long time to charge. Something that saves your battery and also speeds up your camera when shooting time lapses is to turn off your image review. You don't need image review when you're shooting time lapses. That's just dumb and silly. And I always recommend turning that off. With the images that come out of this camera, you can render a video file that is just under 5K resolution. So the images are, and I'm not gonna try to remember these numbers again, are 4,896 pixels wide by 3,672 pixels tall. It also shoots 4K video at up to 30 frames a second, which I used for this sun shot. Bear in mind, I was so far zoomed into the sun that I would probably fry the sensor if you just shoot it. So I put a ND filter in front, which wasn't enough. Then I put another ND filter in front and that was too much. It made it all blurry. Um, I have ordered some step 
down filters to use my other filters on here. So I'll probably make a follow up video on this or at least, I don't know, play around with shooting the sun more to show you guys. But yeah, watch out when shooting straight into the sun because I'm pretty sure you can just fry a sensor like that quite easily. Uh, but yeah, how cool is this footage of the sun in front or with some clouds in front of the sun? Um, and that's why I got this camera. I have plenty of gear to shoot the wide angles, to shoot the medium shots, to shoot the, you know, slightly tele shots on the 200mm lens. But I bought this camera as a novelty piece, as something that could help me create shots that I couldn't otherwise. It also opens up so many more image creating opportunities from this new flat with these crazy views because now I can like zoom in and just have a little shot like cranes or people at work in buildings and stuff. I can zoom in on the shard, show the light, you know, moving up at night, which it does randomly and it's hard to time. And yeah, it's just a niche little product that didn't cost me a lot of money that I love playing around with and I've never been able to shoot this kind of stuff. So I'm super, super happy with this, especially because it was only 170 quid. There's another camera that I would love to try. It's the Nikon P1000 which has, I believe, a 3000 millimeter equivalent zoom versus the 1200 millimeter equivalent zoom. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a different tripod uh, to stabilize that one, but yeah. If anyone's getting rid of a P1000 and wants to loan it to me here in London, I'd love to try it out. Um, but yeah, for now, I hope you enjoyed this random little gear video where I show you some of the, uh, the toys I just buy to play with. Um, I kind of bought this before my birthday and I knew I was gonna get stuck in isolation for a little while here, so I was like, you know what, I found this cheap camera, let's give it a go. And it has, I'm happy to say, very, very pleasantly surprised me and actually impressed me. I will be taking this with me on a lot of shoots because it opens up these unique imaging opportunities. And that's that. If there's anything you want to see me do with it, or if there's anything else you want to see me do, let me know, hit me up. Make sure to join the channel if you wanna support the channel and myself. And that's pretty much it. Hope you're having a great day. Check out my ebooks and that's all really. Apologize about the sound and the, and the, the image of this video, but this office is going to be uh, decorated very soon. I bought a very fancy desk that I'm super excited about and I will be documenting the build out and the change in the apartment on the members or patron side of the channel. So hit that join button if you want to join that. See ya.